All right. Welcome everybody back to Blythe Natural Living. This is the show where we talk about the physical and metaphysical principles for creating the health, vitality, and life you love. Joining me today, I'm so excited, is she's really an alchemist, clinical herbalist, amazing medicine woman. Melissa Henning is with me today. Very Hi. nice to have you here. Hi. Um, so I got Melissa's email. Melissa uh, has an amazing wild crafted herbal apothecary and she makes amazing products. And we're going to talk today about herbs for improving your immune system and keeping you healthy this cold season. There's no reason to get sick. It's like we can create a strong enough immunity where we don't have to get coughs and colds and flus and all of that. And I received an email from Melissa several weeks ago about how to keep your kids healthy this winter. And I was like, yes, that's what I need. And learned about your amazing products. And I ordered right away. And my son, my four-year-old son uh, had had a cough for two weeks. And after taking your elderberry syrup for three days, his cough has ceased and it's, and he loves it. It's so good. He takes it in a little cup with crystal water and it's like his little juice. And so I'm just so grateful because there's so many other great products that he would never touch, <laughs> but he loves your elderberry syrup. So let's dive into what are some plants that we can connect with to keep our immune system strong this winter? Yeah. I mean, elderberry, that's one. I love, but I love that your son took that and takes that and it healed him because really that's starting this for as their culture and normalizing. We take, we drink elderberry syrup, mommy makes this or buy, you know, however we get the elderberry syrup, we're not running and buying over the counter drugs from the Walgreens. It's just like mommy makes homemade remedies and these heal us naturally. And I love that so much. I'm so glad he loved it. And yeah. yeah so and, and learning that connection of the plants, it's like, they really are here for something. They really are, you know, they really are our medicine. They are, they were here first. They, you know, they're, they're our ancestors. We can learn so much from the plants. And even like, I'm just thinking about how my son, if he gets a boo-boo or hour or anything, he's running for his herbal sap. You know, the, I love like just putting, building Knowing this into, that. The, into the culture for them. Um, Heavenly. Yeah. So your son gets to see you craft all of these amazing products. I love, uh, what do, what do you call it? A oh, wild to body, wild to body <laughs> skincare, your skincare. I'm like, that is so, it just feels so good. Like that resonates at another level mm -hmm. when you know you're putting products on your body and in your body that are just right from the earth. It's so true. I, you know, Rosemary Gladstar, she's a legend herbalist. And, and she said 30 years ago, if you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. It's so simple. You know, it's like something we all know. But can we literally read the ingredients of these, even the supplements and the oils and the toothpaste? Could we eat it? You know, it's just it's simple, but it's such a great, beautiful statement to live by because yeah. our skin is our, our largest organ constantly soaking things up in 10 minutes. It's in our bloodstream. You know, so I am just an advocate, like just in reading every ingredient, dissecting every ingredient before it goes in, in my mouth, on my body, on my family's body. You know? For sure. I am horrified when I see kids with the blue toothpaste, that bright blue. I'm like, <laughs> get it away. Like, you know, that's not something that you want going into your gums that goes into oh. your bloodstream. It's like our mouth absorbs everything. And Oh. And, and, and the Dimatap, right? The bright orange and these, oh my yeah. I mean, my kids would never go anywhere near that. I would never give that to them anyway. But right. I mean, it's like children that are like kind of forced to have that. They, they have, there's a revulsion for a reason because <laughs> it's just, True. Not, it's, it's, it's turning off the signs and symptoms. It's not actually healing the body and nourishing the body with what with what we want. So elderberry is a really great one. What else? What do you grow? Right. So, what do you like to share with people for immune support? Yeah. So there's two different ways to do it. I grow half, but I mostly am in the woods, wild crafting everything straight from the wild. I feel like it's a lot stronger, concentrated. It's more resistant resilient to nature itself than when I'm pampering all my little things in the garden they're getting just enough water I mean these plants in the wild are strong medicine wrong they're, so yeah. you just go out in the forest and know what to look for and just get that's amazing. yeah and I've taken years of 
local um, herb walks and really, you got to I mean, really, you really know. are a clinical herbalist. Like you, yes. Right. It's like, there's, yeah, a, you've got to know the, you got to know what you're working with. And Arizona and Sedona, there's enough to work with right there. There's That's amazing. Especially of in medicine. Oh my gosh. Right. The magic there. <laughs> right there. Yeah. They're, and they're stronger. They're so resilient. These plants because what the harsh conditions that they live through here in the desert, really good medicine here. But so elderberry is, I'm sure you guys probably, you're California, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure there might be elderberry trees up and down the streets, or just the gallery. Once it's in your consciousness, you'll you'll start seeing things everywhere. You'll start seeing medicine once you start working with some plants, learning some plants, and they're in there. Yeah, you're like, oh wow, I, I do that all the time. Like, no, oh my it's gosh. true. When I started learning about herb walks, I even in my neighborhood, I would just start to even see all the food trees. Oh, that's an olive tree. Right? That's a fig tree. That's a, a pomegranate tree, lemon tree, apple tree. Yeah, you said, I think you said bananas. Oh my God, there's bananas up there. That Yeah, you start awesome. to go, wow, I didn't realize I lived in such a food forest in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That nobody's, yeah. paying, that nobody's paying attention to. They, they fall down and the gardeners pick them up and throw them. I know. Right. We knock on stuff. doors. What? We knock on doors. Like, can we forward some of your food? And people have always said yes every time. Yeah, because yeah. it's not right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We so have there's, avocado there's... trees. I'm like, here, take, take. Yeah. Wow. I would love that. So yeah, there's so there's the preventative herbs. They're immunomodulating herbs. That that mm -hmm. falls under uh, elderberry, reishi mushroom, astragalus root is a great one. And and what you want to do is take these preventative herbs before before you get sick. They're yeah. long term, you can take them every day. They're like food, like food is medicine, right. herbs. Yeah. And the, even the elderberry, that's kind of a food. You take your teaspoon every day as a preventative. Huh. And then if someone that first onset, they get sick, like they're whatever, everyone has a personal symptom. Some people get a scratchy throat or an itchy nose or a little chills. That's when like, you got to grab for the elderberry really quickly within mm -hmm. like that first couple hours of those onset symptoms. And then you just dose it heavy 10, 10 times a day. You just keep, you can take a lot of herbs. They're natural. Like, so the elderberry is like, so, so yeah, every day. Yeah, overtake it. Right. It's not a problem. Right. Yeah. And then you, yeah. And that's, that's such an awesome one. And then once it hits and say, you know, people do still get sick that take all these preventatives because there's so many other things like stress and food and not moving, you know, the lifestyle immunity yeah. thing. So then, so then you can take other things like echinacea. Echinacea just boosts the, that's this immune stimulant. There's immunomodulators that are really good for strengthening the immune system long-term. And then when you get sick, you want the stimulate quick, like amp yeah. up those white blood cells and the echinacea is going to do that. And you can still take the elderberry, even at the onset, you take the echinacea and you just kind of like, you know, you keep taking your herbs and a lot of them. Yeah. And right. Like, Hit yeah, it hard. There's... That's what I tell people. Okay? You got to hit it hard. Like you don't, you don't have to worry about the dosing on the labels. Just with herbs, if it's really clean and it's true, it's you true. Do you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, of course, with children, you would probably just do yeah. half the dose, or you know, or and different people are sensitive to different different things. But in in general, like an elderberry is a food like berry that grows on a tree. Yeah, but, you know, you can just dose it. It's awesome. So, so that's a, that's a number one thing is to have it on hand because sometimes you don't have time to order it online or run to the store or whatever. So you've got your, your apothecary at home stocked, you know, with your elderberry syrup, your echinacea tincture. We really like OSHA root. It's a Southwestern. I love root. OSHA. I love you know, OSHA. OSHA. Yes. OSHA, oh. astragalus and oil of oregano have been the reason why I did not get sick for 25 years until COVID. And then I let myself get COVID. Cause I was like, it's probably some kind of a viral upgrade. Like we should just like, you know, get it and you're going to get over it and you'll be stronger for it. Um, but, and you know, everyone in my house had it and I didn't try too hard not to get it, but yeah. But besides that, those three OSHA, astragalus and oil of oregano were like at first onset, you hit those and you just don't get sick. Then. Oh, that's awesome that you know that you OSHA is very antiviral as well. Yeah. And it's the immune stimulating. So it's going to stimulate that kick that immune system into gear right away. Yeah, so good. We were the same. We're just like, we want to always be updating our immune systems and not suppressing the, the symptoms. A lot of people get a cough and they want this suppression and right. or decongestion. 
digestion. It's like, let that mucus flow. It's healthy. It you out. know, it's your, it's a natural immune response to, to cough, you know, to get yeah. the mucus, to get the fever. Even people want to lower this fever. We can make people more comfortable, you know, and, and help them with herbs along the way and open pores, let some of the heat out with the diaphoretic herb. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not about like suppressing the symptoms yeah. or avoiding the, like you said, the, the virus or because the symptom is part of the healing. It's like with a fever, the body's warming up to kill the pathogen. And so when we're so quick to like, stop the heat, it's like, no, that's the body's intelligence killing the pathogen with the heat. Yeah. I love it. It's so true. And the heat and talking about heat, heat is so important at the onset as well. Cause that that's movement in the body. That's the fire and the digestion. You know, we need mm -hmm. the heat because when things are cold and stagnant, they get stuck. The mucus yeah. gets stuck. So just people will be doing ginger tea. That that's another like really good mm -hmm. at the onset. It's moving. It's hot. It's going to really like kind of move things along. Ginger's yeah. detoxifying helps move those toxins out that heat. And, and even that, just like shredding some ginger and putting it in water, like thinly slicing it, like with a mandolin or something or a food processor and making a pot of it is like, Oh, yeah. right. Add a little bit of honey. Cayenne is another really good spice. Nice. We will do tons of garlic at the yeah. onset. Uh, one thing I had in the post in the email was the garlic on the child's foot feet. Yes. That works so that. well. Yeah. Tell anything. Yeah. So anytime my son has something coming on because he's in school and there, there's things that go around, we just can't avoid, you know, <laughs> for, whatever happens. for sure in school. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, he never got sick ever until school. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? yes. Introducing them to everything. Right. It's Which is good. 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 Way. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. building their, their immunity, their immune system. So yeah, what we do is I take gar garlic, fresh garlic, about um, six cloves chop okay. it really fine. And then I put, I put in it in the olive oil and I, I do, I let it sit all day on the counter in the oil. And then right before bed, I strain the oil and I slather it on the bottom of his feet in 15 minutes. He'll have garlic breath. It, everything it goes wow. right in through the feet and he's barefoot all the time. We're super wild and free. And I think about that sometimes like when he's in an oily parking lot, I'm like, no, let's put your shoes on. Everything's soaking up through the feet. Yeah. You know, so, so the garlic oil, and then I put a double sock on and he yeah. wakes up like 50% better, if not more gone, you know? Now would that work if you put like several garlic cloves sliced so it opens up the potency and had it in olive oil, like a small olive oil jar, like an infusion. Like if you did like an infusion and then just use the oil, would that work? So you didn't have to like strain it every time? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like Keep it in there. Oil? Totally. Yeah. Actually, you're right. I totally have that in my cabinet from the last time we did it. I, ke I kept some in the oil. Okay. So you can yes. just use it as an infusion and then take out a little bit and use it. Yeah. Such a good call. Brilliant idea. Uh, the garlic, yeah. That's amazing. I'm going to do that yeah. to my kids. With children, it's sometimes hard for them to take things. And, you know, one way to get them to take the tinctures is in apple juice or, you know, like add the raw honey to things mm -hmm. like the elderberry syrups easier because it's made with raw honey, mm -hmm. which raw honey itself. Oh, my gosh. Antimicrobial. So good for coughs and sore throats. And it helps people sleep if you take a little bit of honey. But it's got to be truly raw, unheated honey. Once it's heated, it's just pure it's sugar. Yeah, that's such you know. a, it's such an important distinction. It's right? such an important yeah. distinction. I'm wondering if you can use the garlic oil probably on your lungs as well. Mm -hmm. Put it in here. Yeah, like a pulpit. You know? Yeah, like, like or, yeah, to like help open it up or even infusing like rosemary or and eucalyptus to kind of like open this mm -hmm. up. And totally. Oil. And I've even heard of um, someone doing mustard. They were out of town in your, or they're actually in Europe and the, all they had in the, they were really sick and they had mustard in the fridge and she squirted it all over this rag and put the mustard because it's so Brilliant. hot. Yeah. yeah. Like just whatever. There's probably so many remedies right in our kitchen. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. 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 The poultice, the oil, garlic oil, yeah. you can put that here, maybe a heating pad over it. Yeah. That heat such good medicine. I've been giving my daughter uh, who refuses to take anything and she refused to take the elderberry syrup. And then she went to a sleepover Saturday night and she came home with a cough and she's been home all week. And I'm like, it's particularly annoying to me. Cause I'm like, you wouldn't be sick if you would take this stuff. So I, I made her take the cough tincture 
from your herb okay. shot, which is so much more potent than the elderberry yeah. syrup, which is really like a lovely juice if you dilute it a little. And I'm like, you're taking this. And she took it. And I mean, she's taken it several times and it's helped. I'm like, you're taking this. Uh, oh. Tell us about some of those amazing wildcrafted ingredients. I was like, wow, such a stellar profile of plant. So so many things. There, I mean, there's two types of coughs. There's a wet cough and a dry cough. And you really want to know which herbs are, are for what, because you don't want to take, if there's no mucus, you don't want to take the, the wet cough formula because that that's an expectorant. It's getting things up and out, you know, what kind of, did she have a dry cough then? It starts out dry. Before yeah, it was a it dry cough. Wet. It was a dry cough. Yeah. Right. So if it's dry and it's irritated, there's certain herbs like marshmallow root, mm -hmm. and that's just going to moisten. Demulsant herbs, they moisten everything. And, th and that's super helpful in the beginning. And then it mm -hmm. kind of usually turns into a wet cough. And that's when you want OSHA root. That's a such a good expectorant to get things up and out. But yeah, there, there's just, there's so many healing medicinal plants, like you said, in, in the cough tincture. So wild cherry bark, that is just... Mm -hmm an old time traditional remedy. And, and that one helps stop the dry cough, that wild cherry bark. And that's really important. So that's night. literally bark from a wild cherry tree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you tincture it. The alcohol pulls out the plant, the constituents of the plant, the chemicals in the plant. That's the best way to do it. People do make things with glycerin, but it doesn't quite have that strength to pull it out that like alcohol does. Mm. Out, out of roots and barks now like leaves and and like upper aerial parts of the plant you can get away with a like a vodka but I do use a really strong um, 190 proof cane alcohol to pull out of roots and barks and resins they How just take, take about six weeks oh wow and I put it on a little heating pad and like warm it just a little You're like <laughs> yeah it's like a whole it, it's like slow herbalism you know, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. So I have all these things brewing and then, I, you know, strain them and make formulas and remedies. And, and I, I have them on my site, but I also, I have people that come to me all the time that have a specific thing that they need a specific herb for. Okay. So that's the best part. I oh, just love it. Wow. And then you just like, yeah. Know, and then I'm just amazing. like pouring things in. <laughs> I love yeah, it. It's, it's really fun. That That's the fun. That's the best part is formulating specific for people getting to know. It's such a connection piece to it. So you're available for that. So people can reach out to you. I'll put you, I'll put your contact and website, everything in the show notes below. And it's melissahenning.com. That's amazing that you offer that to people. Yeah. That's, a, that's absolutely amazing. So someone can come to you and go, listen, I just got like a gallbladder or liver diagnosis or something. And you can be like, right. oh, I can give you something that will help detoxify and tonify and all of that. And just boom, boom. That's amazing. Or whatever. Right. I'm slowish. I'm, I feel like I have low energy and I just need like, energy. Or like anxiety, the nervous system. You know, a lot of people can't sleep at night. I mean, there's so, you know, our world these days, there's so many things, like the onslaught of pollution and chemicals and Wi-Fi and like, no, everyone has anxiety, depression, and can't sleep. Not everyone, you know, but yeah, but, it, but it's prominent for sure. Prominent. And the plants, yeah. they support us. So I always feel like, you know, I don't want to, I need the whole history because we got food and diet and lifestyle and we have herbs and we got to meet in the middle. It's like 50, 50. Like yeah. if, if we don't have that foundational diet down, that, that's just the foundation, you, you know, the yeah. herbs aren't going to really work. They work a hundred times better. So the first thing I do is like, what I need a food diary. I need a five day food diary. Oh man, that opens up everything, <laughs> you know, cause the plant, yeah, they're going to come in and, and they definitely help, but it, if we're not going to change a lot of these foundational lifestyle things, yeah. they don't work yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And, and when you do change those lifestyle things, you find that the plants are so much like the herbs taste better and they resonate better. It's like, you just up leveled your vibration with, with your diet that, that I put you more in resonance with the herbs. It, it seems that way for me anyway, that once people can, can really let go of the processed foods and the chips mm. and the, all these kinds of things like sodas and the, these kinds of things that are so obviously anti-life really they're just creating your degeneration by causing your body to be acidic by causing mm. your adrenals to be inflamed uh, when you can elevate out of that then then herbs 
they taste good, they feel good. Whereas before when people aren't on that level or they, you know, it's almost so resistant. It's almost like the herbs are like, you're not ready for me yet. You need to, you need to up level a little bit to really use me in my full power, you know? It is true. I mean, once we're more clear and we're so in tune, we can even say, well, this herb is working or this herb's not working, you know, mm-hmm. or same with all the foods and everything we do. We got, I love to just be such a clean, clear vessel so that I'm in tune to all the things I'm doing and if what they're, if, how they're affecting me. Yeah. Oh yeah. And things that you've suggested to improve immune system, for instance, like the cayenne pepper and the garlic, these are things everyone has at home and, and you can see instantly and feel instantly how they affect you. It's like when you drink a cayenne pepper tea, you're feeling that you're all all of a sudden, you know, not only of course is creating heat in your body, but you, you'll see the detoxification. You'll feel different. Yeah. Totally. And, and there's, there's so much more to it. You know, about forest bathing. Oh, I love it. Tell us though, because people watching may not know. <laughs> yeah. So forest bathing, it, it originated in Japan. It's, it, there's actually like a lot of science behind sitting mm. in nature and the whole nervous system relaxes. It builds immunity. It's, it's a real thing to go out and forest bathe and just be quiet because we are so many sensory overloads constantly. I mean, I'm so guilty of scrolling on my Instagram, but when I sit in nature, I'm like, Oh, you know, this feeling of like, that's so health. That's going to build the immune system. Yeah. So yeah. And so the it, oxygen, right? It's like all the oxygen in the forest wow. too. It's like when you right. enter it, you're just like entering the lungs and it's just you're getting this oh. higher quality of oxygen. Yeah. And all these immunity things, lifestyle immunity things for prevention. And say we still get sick, it's it doesn't last as long. The duration yeah. of the sickness is so much shorter. I mean, if I'm down, it's a day. Yeah, I think maybe two, you know, but the state, somebody eating the chips and not ever out in nature, it could be down a week or two. So, yeah. Or two, right. Yeah. That's like the, the normal cycle of a cold or virus seven to 14 days. But yeah, so it is, it's so like worth it to just have all these preventative things and, and they're fun. Who doesn't want to go, go to nature? Totally. Who doesn't <laughs> want to forest bathe? I'm so glad you said that because stress is such a big factor in mm-hmm. And whether we get the flu, coughs, colds, and whether we have a runny nose and just, it's just such a big factor in how well our immune system can handle all the pathogens that are being thrown at us constantly. Um, Yeah. And, and, and all the MDs know it, but for some reason they don't say, okay, well then let's get you, let's sort out your emotional wellness. Well, let's make sure you have a plan for your mental, emotional wellness. Oh, right. Yeah. They don't talk about it. They just want to give a pill. You know, Mm -hmm. people are used to like a really quick fix, you know, but yeah. How about, oh my gosh, stress that that's huge. You know what a quick fix is though, right? Like going in the forest, right? You're like, (laughs) although not everybody lives as close to the forest as you do, but a quick fix is taking a deep breath and going within, right? It's so true. And just simplifying, simplifying that to-do list getting help, you know, if you can help with a cleaner or a sitter, whatever, however, community, you know, there's so many things to reduce the stress. Even like you said, like taking that, I set a timer. I have to take a deep breath every hour because I tend to hold my breath. I'm so busy and I'm doing so much that I I set a timer and I'm like, just to give a reset, right? Because we can just, people are just like eating pizza and typing and coffee and, you know, and it's like, go, go. And though, and so much more is available to us. Like when we're really genuinely interested in things and when we really genuinely know that we're a creator and we want to create so much, there's so much available to us that we could just always be doing healthy things too. The, but always, you know, we could always just be learning and writing and growing and studying and working out. And, and even that it's like, we need stillness. Like people so need true. to sit in silence and we need stillness. Just so to connect. true. Yeah. So good. And then I have a thing where like when my son comes, comes home from school, I put the phone on the charger and I leave it there because mm-hmm. I'm on it the whole time he's at school. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, put this away. Yeah. So there's a lot of intentional things to relax the nervous system, be more present, get that, reduce stress. 
and sleep. You know, there, there's so many pillars to the health and the digestion. 80% of our immune response, the cells are in the gut, you know, so we got to keep our gut healthy. And that, that part that goes with rest, the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest, yeah. sitting, eating, putting all the phones away and every, you know, just take, we say, we're, we say a prayer for gratitude. It gives you a moment to just stop and rest to digest the food. Cause that's a huge part of our immune system probiotics and, you know, is the gut. Yeah, we really are in such a culture of eating on the go and eating in front of screens and our body doesn't digest the same if it's in front of a screen. It's like there's too many, like there's focuses here when it needs to just be in here. And yeah, and and our digestion is so crucial, integral to our immune system. It's like if we're not, if we have undigested foods, you know, making us toxic on the inside, then that's not definitely not supporting the immune system. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Like good digestion with no gas, no bloating. Cause most people have that and yeah. that's going to support the immune system. So working on digestion, whatever that looks like some people, it's not drinking any water while they're eating, not diluting the enzymes or it's chewing 50 bites to food, to a liquid. There's all these little different tips to improve digestion in turn, improving the immune system. And I'm sure there's a, many a, a formulae for that as well. I love your, uh, what is ox meal? I got the rose ox meal, which is in like an apple cider vinegar with the rose. And that is felt like that was really healthy for digestion. I was like, this is amazing. It is. I love that. So it's apple cider vinegar and raw honey mixture. The vinegar and the honey pull out the plant constituents. So I mix. And that's what the word uh, ox meal means. Yeah. Oxymel. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, a, okay. it's a traditional um, raw honey and vinegar base. And then you put the, you shove all the fresh plants in there and that sits for six weeks. I do the rose petals for the rose. The, oh. it, isn't it nice? You can taste the rose. It, it, it's honestly one of the best things that I've ever tasted. And I'm not an apple cider vinegar person. Like it's, I'm not one to like, oh, just want to take a oh. teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in the morning or a tablespoon. But that is amazing. I have a question about that. So on the jar, it says take three times a day. And so it's mm -hmm. a small jar. So is it meant to be like a dose of something that you take for two or three days and just complete it? Is that what it's meant um, Well, so if you do a teaspoon, oh, teaspoon. yeah, like about a week. It was last year a week. I did or a you... <laughs> oh, Okay. But it's good. So I mean, it was like... But we just add, we add the oxymels to our water every day. And then you're getting a little bit of the apple cider vinegar in the water. And it's so mm. good. Yeah, I love, mm. I, I love oxy. I take so many plants and make oxymels. We do lemon balm, nettles, chickweed, the rose. Like anytime I can find something in nature, you would pack the jar tight and then pour the apple cider vinegar about three quarters of the way. And then the last quarter honey. Some people do half and half. I don't want as much sugar honey in there. Okay. And then that's it for six weeks and we add it to water. I use it as salad dressing. So the raw honey, of course, the raw, raw, honey. raw, unheated honey. Yeah. So and could then, you do that with like rosemary to make like an anti-inflammatory? Totally. Tree? That'd be yeah. great for digestion and colds and flus would be the rosemary. It's, it's antibacterial. I saw you blend uh, fresh oregano on your Instagram. Everybody, you must follow Melissa, Melissa Hennig on yeah. Instagram because you're you're my favorite follow. I'm like, how have I not been following you this whole time? So much fun stuff. So I've never seen uh, like fresh oregano like that. And okay, did you, yeah. you just found that in the forest or did you yeah, go yeah. somewhere for that? Like uh, we actually have it in the, the can. We have it in the canyon, Sedona. Yeah, it, it's a really cool purple bursting flower and, and the leaves are so strong of oregano. I mean, it's like burns your mouth. Yeah, that's yeah. why I, I mean, I, I've been a longtime fan of oil of oregano as like my always keeping me healthy thing. Like it never lets me down. I knew it was such a superpower. I don't know how I've never look to see what it looked like. And I'm like, isn't that funny? You're just like, we don't even think sometimes of like, the origins of things, but you can use that as an oxymel too, then could you? Oh, I've totally made that as an oxymel. It's delicious. 
It's so spicy. Too. It's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. That one is really good. I, I think I had it already sold out this year. So that's the thing. Like my stuff is pretty small batch, wild crafted. It's like sometimes as people grow, it seems like the quality of their products can go down a little. So mm -hmm. I love ordering from small batch apothecaries because they're strong medicine. Because once I'm sold out, I'm not going to be foraging till it blooms again. Oh, I see. I love this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like with the seasons, like, okay, that batch is gone in June. It's going to pop up and I can make it again, you know? So <laughs> you kind of got to stock up and also your it's potent medicine. That's brilliant. I was so impressed with the variety of products you have. I was like, wow, like, <laughs> there's a wow. lot. I know. I know my husband's always like, you're like a one woman apothecary carrying everything. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's amazing. It's so it's fun. They all stem from literally things that we take. We, we take so many herbs. I love herbs and plants. And, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe people want this as well. Maybe the public wants this. So I always make a big batch for us and then I sell the rest and it works out great. It's awesome. That's amazing. Your labeling is so beautiful. And I know you, so you do it all, right? I mean, you're the, you're the alchemist herbalist, and then you're also the businesswoman running mm -hmm. a business. And that's, I, I have so much respect for you. It's, I know it's so hard. I mean, it's like wearing, and you're a mother and a wife, you know, right. and probably a really great friend. And, you know, it's like, there's so many things to juggle, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, there are, there, you know, I have, sometimes I have to find the balance of it all because yeah. it, it can be, it can be overwhelming. I'm like, wow, how do people do all this? We're super women. <laughs> You know? Yeah, get you some help pretty soon. That's what I say. I say I say yeah. the right and perfect team for you because you have such totally. an incredible offering. I mean, Thank real you. real medicine from real plants, mm -hmm. real skincare from real plants uh, that people really need and love. Yeah, yeah, totally safe, natural remedies. Yeah, straight from the earth. Yeah, that's why yeah. I call it like wild to body because we're out in the wild foraging. I bring my husband. He helps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And how fun is that? Do you bring your son too? I'm sure. Oh, yeah. He knows yeah. all the plant. He knows wild yarrow, and he's always bringing me mullen, and I mean, he knows them all. Yeah. It's I really cannot fun. wait to see what he's going to become. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. You know that book by Emily Winfield Martin. Um, what is it? When I look at you and you look at me. I wonder what wonderful things you will be that just came to mind when, when, when I see this little boy, you know, it's like, what this knowledge base that he's grown up with, it's just amazing totally. to see what he, you know, how he'll use that in life, you know, even just for yeah. himself, if he, you know, I'm not projecting that he does anything else, but even just for his own knowledge and his own health and his own, you know, he, he can live to be 130 years old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty cool. He does a lot of hunting with his dad. I mean, he he's pretty smart, you know, yeah, or just really capable for his age. He starts our fires every day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, man, I love that. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I want to talk to you. And yeah, we're gonna do a second segment on uh, some fun things for the holidays. But I just want to let everybody know as we close out this segment, that Melissa has a really lovely discount for you all grateful 10 at melissahenning.com. I'll have that um, link in the show notes below and that coupon code. Go get yourself some amazing wildcrafted herbal apothecary goodness handmade by this lovely woman. So thank, thank you so you. much, you all. We will see you again next week. Bye for now.